tonight, live from the Inspire Theater in the heart of downtown Vegas, where the strip meets Fremont, we present the Downtown Podcast. Starring your host, Mr. Dylan Jorgensen, Johnny Sos, Trey Tayaferi, and music by yours truly, DJ Lenny Alfonso. Tonight's guest, from Zappos, Tyler Williams. CEO of Evite, Victor Cho. Musical guest, Pure Joy. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for the man <laughs> who was cut first in the spelling bee, Mr. Trey Tyafe. quiet real quick all right <laughs> how's everyone doing today all right, all right. Hey, great show we got a great show for you guys today um, for this past three-day weekend Facebook's algorithm blocked the phrase what's everyone doing this weekend thinking that it was spam well at least that's what my mother told me was the reason no one came to my barbecue <laughs> uh, yeah. oh. maybe it's just Facebook had it wrong <laughs> but you got all these Doritos you got all these Doritos <laughs> That's what my mom sounds like when she's trying to console me. Um, you know, they should block the phrase, uh, Josh Duggar invited you to play. Oh. Let me tell you about this. Let me tell you about this. So TLC canceled the show, 19 kids and counting, because it was just discovered that the oldest son, Josh Duggar, uh, had molested five kids when he was a teenager. Actually, it's five kids and counting. Oh. <laughs> it's a new show on Spike. To her. Too, er too early or too late, one of yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, after his vi visit to Liberia, Bill Clinton announced to the United Nations that he is officially Ebola free. <laughs> then later he said, now it's time to work on these herpes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Monica, you should probably get yourself checked out. <laughs> 20 years, it's still funny. <laughs> so, uh, Today, the, the National Spelling Bee happened. Oh, yeah, right? that's right. Yeah, these kids it's time, all it's, over the... It's that time again. Joey, what are you doing? I'm talking. I'm here for a spelling bee, Trey. What the yeah, spelling yeah. bee was today. Trey. It's, it's today. not here. It's today. Judge, it's today. give me the first one. Okay. Are we doing this again? Yeah, let him, let him finish. Okay. Your first word, Joey, abstain. Abstain. Okay. We got this. I got this. Okay. Can you give me an origin? The, the origin is uh, Latin. Latin. You Can you do it in a sentence? In a sentence, yes. Uh, Trey should abstain from telling jokes. Uh, come on, guys. Can, can you give me a definition? Uh, definition, to refrain oneself from doing. Oh, that makes sense now. Um, oh. can, can you give me a hint? No, I can't. Okay. Abstain. abstain. A, B, S. T eight what nine hashtag poop emoji <laughs> abstain. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. <laughs> what abstain? That is, that is incorrect. <laughs> Whoa, uh, Joe! Remember he went to Harvard, <laughs> Joey. What what the hell are we doing? Abstain. Okay. So this this is cool. Two of our volunteers, uh, <laughs> Kyle and B, are getting hitched this weekend. They have, they have a really cool story. They, they met on, on Twitter. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. They met on Twitter. He said that he followed her first. It's kind of how I did it in high school, except I'd follow from the 10 feet behind. <laughs> um, then they started talking that, you know, they started talking and had the relationship start that way. And I think Twitter is a great way to have a relationship because it's only 140 characters or less. <laughs> how was your day? You wouldn't believe what happened. My sister called me, and she's talking about my sister, who's upset about this. Okay, that's enough. Next subject. <laughs> um, so, uh, ooh. Oh, you act like your coach. Uh, uh, actually, if you want to check out the wedding, they've decided to broadcast it on Periscope. Wow. 
live stream. That's pretty cool, yeah. And if you want to see me eat Doritos and sweatpants, I will also be broadcasting that on Thursday. <laughs> You're I still, got it. I got a ton of Doritos. You're still working that Dorito sponsor. Yeah, well, sponsor, you know, right? I eat so many of them. <laughs> the gourmet food. Uh, so yeah, so we should check them out. Check them out this weekend uh, if you want to see a wedding the way the founding fathers envisioned on Twitter. <laughs> we have a really great show for you guys. <laughs> Just gotta go to a song. Hit it. This is a dance party. Again. I don't know. How's everyone? Yeah. Good show. Go Trey, go Trey. Pump up the jam, pump it up while your feet are stumping. And the jam is pumping, look ahead, the crowd is jumping. How's it going, everybody? How is it going? Thank you, wow. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here, coming down to the podcast tonight. My name is Johnny Sos. Thank you for being here, because today is my first on-camera interview with the podcast. I'm ecstatic that everybody's here tonight. Um, today, I'm going to be introducing you to a man who worked with Zappos under the title of Fungineer. Now, I know exactly what you're, yeah, I know exactly what you're thinking. Fungineer, that sounds amazing. Well, with no more further ado, I'm going to get you guys a sneak peek at the inside of uh, Fungineering. <laughs> and uh, with no more further ado, Tyler Williams, everybody. Sorry. <laughs> Come on out, buddy. How you doing, buddy? Hello. Come on, sit down. So Tyler, how are you doing today, brother? I'm doing fantastic. Good, good. So um, tell us, um, we're all wondering, what exactly is a Fungineer? And uh, tell me, what, what does a Fungineer do on a regular work day? Um, so, Fungineer at Zappos is just a um, made-up term that is a production and technical coordinator for our, um, our parties and our events. I help enhance collisions on our campus, and I build fun things for the campus and just try to make it a funner place to be. So, um, it's a totally made-up title, and I don't think I could get a job anywhere else, but <laughs> Zappos, yeah, Zappos, Zappos so <laughs> gave me a job, so yeah. Definitely. Um, so, that's what Fungineering is, but what is that thing right there? Uh, this is actually a, um, a flame torch that was developed by um, my buddy um, down in uh, Live, uh, Brett Bond from LifeSpark Fire. He invented this little piece at the top, which is a fire pixel. Uh, fire pixel is an amazing piece of engineering and an invention. And we just built this fire staff around it with the idea of uh, being able to have a personal fire stick, dance torch, wizard staff, slash... Mad Max weapon. I mean, there's no really way, other way to put it except that it's just pure awesome. I was going to say, if you just sharpen these edges right here, game over. With yeah. the fire, game over. Exactly. You're cutting and cauterizing, man. Yeah, I mean, Cutting and cauterizing. Being nice time. at the same time, I guess. Do you think we could possibly maybe get a demonstration of it going? Yeah. So the fire so tell, staff. Tell, give me a run through of how it works. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. So there's three buttons on this thing. And basically, you have the fire pixel, which is a really awesome valve that works much like a, um, a production light fixture. Mm -hmm. It's either you have different, uh, it can be like in how uh, you can dim a light on and off. Well, the fire pixel can go as light as a candle to three feet. So it's a pretty amazing piece of engineering up here. And then we just built this staff around it using a water jet and AutoCAD. Um, it's a little Arduino water. system here with a lithium battery, and the rest is just plumbing. And there's three triggers. Uh, this one is just pressure. That one's Pop just it pressure. off. This is a pulsator, so hot, depending on how hard I hit it. And then this that one records, so. And that's when you can just go oh. crazy with it. Do you think I could possibly take a try at it? Yeah? Whoa. All right. Let's see what we got going here. Um, don't kill me. No, no. <laughs> I don't want this to be my last one. <laughs> <laughs> so that turns uh, it off. So. so. Da, 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 da. Oh. <laughs> 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 So we're still trying to come up with a name for this thing. I don't know what exactly to call it. I think uh, you should call it the jaw stick, because it's hot. 
And I'm, I'm, I'm starting to sweat. Storm here. <laughs> you take that away from me, buddy. Probably um, let everybody play with it once we're done. What was it that inspired the birth of this thing? What was it just the fact that you guys have this uh, amazing technology and? Uh, you know, you know, going to Burning Man and going to all these places that have these huge art cars that spit fire. Uh, we wanted more of like a personalized, artistic, smaller version of fire that people could uh, play with. Um, not just you know uh, fire sticks or dancing with fire, but something you can legitimately control um, and have complete control over of uh, the rhythm of it. Um, and so this is the first prototype, but you know uh, we definitely want to enhance it and make it more user friendly. But it's meant to um, something to play with or dance with or cosplay or any of these types of things. I think we're going to take it this week into uh, Comic Con down in Phoenix and see how it goes. I think over. you should take it to a Ramstein concert <laughs> next time they're in town. You yeah. guys remember Ramstein? Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, um, tell me, this is one of the more interesting inventions I've seen lately. What's next on the itinerary for Zappos as far as engineering goes? Um, so, or, or what's on the back burner, should I say? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're experimenting a lot with actually triggering, uh, triggering the fire pixel using drums or using different instruments. So I'd like to see things like uh, um, maybe a, a concert piano player with a fire pixel map to every single one of his keys as he plays. So you can actually visualize uh, what he's playing with fire. We've done some drum circles with this. And uh, it's interesting. People think less about the rhythm and more like, oh, I can make fire happen. And uh, <laughs> we really kind of are wanting to start to see like how people will it'll change their playing with music as they can visualize. Uh, they're playing in, uh, using fire. I'm a big pyromaniac, and I think that... Uh, I think we all were growing up. It all starts <laughs> yeah, back to everybody's is. childhood when your parents tell you not to play with fire. Yeah. And then, guess what? We end up doing it anyways, and we make awesome inventions like this. Tyler, thank you so much for making it on the show today. Um, please tell us where we can find you. Are you on Facebook? Um, yeah, so Tyler Williams on Facebook, Las Vegas. Um, LiveSparkFire.com is actually... Um, the inventor of the fire pixel, and that's who I work with regularly to come up with these awesome ideas. I'm going to be going down there soon, and we'll come up with something different. Well, Tyler, maybe a double-sided one that you pop off on each side. Or oh, something. that'd be Darth Maul. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for making it on the show You're today, welcome. guys. Thanks for guys, me. stay tuned. Up next, we have Dylan with Richard Cho from Evite. So stay tuned. All right. Thank you guys for staying through that break. I appreciate it. Um, wow, that, that was a lot of flames for one segment. But I uh, hope you guys are energized because we have an amazing guest next. And our next guest has 23 years of experience in software and internet technology. And he's worked for some of the biggest names that you will know in Silicon Valley, including Microsoft, Kodak, and Intuit. So please put your hands together for the CEO of Evite, Mr. Victor Chow. Come on out. Pleasure, thank you so much. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Have a seat. I was getting ready to sit down, but that's definitely for you. That's the that's best nice. seat. Just do anything? No. Uh, no. Yeah, touch screens? <laughs> Ooh, it's a volunteer project, bro. Right? It's not happening. <laughs> Um, okay, but anyway, so I, I'm a huge fan of the company. You guys obviously have had tons of success with Evite, but I was wondering if you could just start by giving a quick rundown of what Evite does and then talk about what a daily, uh, or what your life's like day to day. Sure, so hopefully everyone in the audience uh, has at least received an Evite. Yeah, or do you guys shake your water bottles? That's, that's what I should applause for you. Yes. We should do like oh, a yeah, so we we have, water we have bottle shake. Carts of water bottles, so you can literally take them for your whole family. We will mind. <laughs> uh, but for those of you that have received an Evite, and it should be most of you because we are closing in on our two billionth invitation set. Wow. Not there yet, but we're getting close. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, but if you need to throw a party and you want to know who's coming, who's not coming, you go, you select a design, you send out an invitation through email, and people RSVP, say I'm coming, I'm right. not coming. That's kind of Evite version one, I would describe it. And that's predominantly the business today. It is the, just the seed of what the future will be, right. which is why I joined the company. Uh, okay, well, talk to me about what is it like. I, I think we have a lot of entrepreneurs that watch the show. Like, starting from kind of ground level to where you are, what does your day to day look like? So, ne every day varies. I will make one comment, which is uh, I actually live in San Francisco. Evite headquarters are in right. Los Angeles. So, just a weird digression. Uh, oh, I okay, live okay. off of apps. 
in a very strange way. So I literally wake up in the morning, I grab an Uber, I fly <laughs> into LA, I'm not carrying any clothes, I have a wardrobe there, it'll be 10 o'clock at night, I don't know where I'm sleeping, I'll bring up hotels tonight, I'll go Whoa. to sleep. Uh, it's actually very cool. Than I thought. Uh, but that has nothing really to do with your question. Day-to-day uh, -day for the business, I'd say at a high level breaks into three big chunks. Uh, my personal philosophy is that any business really only exists for two reasons. It's to get an engaged group of employees okay. excited about something that is delivering value for customers. Uh, okay. And that formula will create shareholder uh, return. Okay, and so, that's, that's the kind of formula you're thinking about every day when you're like, what meetings should I take? What it is, so you know, at a high level, I'd, I'd say my, my day kind of splits up into those three chunks. I have a, a large chunk of time spent on cu really customer-facing issues. Are we building great products uh, that are going to change the world? Okay. Uh, a big chunk is around, are you building a high-performing organization? And, you know, probably a third on the financial side. Oh, okay. Um, and then, okay, so I want to talk about, uh, I saw that you recently redid your core values, and that's something that, uh, you know, Zappos is sort of famous for. It's something that a lot of the companies that are invested in downtown are sort of um, glued to as their primary motivation. But talk to me about what you picked for your um, new core values and how that all came about. Yeah, no, so uh, I'm a big proponent of employees actually defining the culture of a business. So we did this in the beginning of the year in February. We actually brought the entire company together and we said, we asked them, what kind of company do we want to be? And we actually had this huge whiteboard session. We had. I don't know, 60 values probably, potential, that people actually voted on, had great dialogue, and we ended up with a series of nine. Uh, and that, and so was the, it the company you thought it was going to be? Were you surprised? That's a good question. Um, no, there, there were some really good additions in there that I would, uh, I would have not naturally okay. thought of. And there are two declarations. There were two that were basically non-negotiable. The first one is integrity without compromise, which okay. I took from Intuit. Is, it was Intuit's top value, and so any company that I want to run Basically, has, integrity, has to have integrity at every single level, every single interaction. Uh, and then the second one was uh, customer obsession. Make sure that you're really customer obsessed. Okay. Uh, gotcha. But the rest, yeah, no, the rest came in varying shapes and sizes. Like some at, surprising. Out of curiosity, I'm sure some of them are more natural for you and some are less natural. But what are, what's the one of your core values that you think is where you could make the biggest improvement in your life? So uh, well, that's a good question. We've got a, a hard one, which is uh, it's framed as trust and be transparent. And the essence of that value, ah, maybe, maybe I'll describe yeah, yeah, how yeah. it manifests in my behavior yeah. as the CEO. So I do some weird stuff as the CEO. Like I actually <laughs> share the financials. I do some weird stuff in general, <laughs> so it's good, yeah. I do th things that surprise the employees. Uh, I share the financials on a weekly basis, pretty much to the line item detail. And you know, when my, my finance guy, when he first saw that, he's like, wow, you're sharing a lot of information. And I said, yes, because I think the employees need the information to make the right decisions. Right. Uh, and our philosophy is we're going to trust you to be an adult in the company, and therefore we're going to be transparent with information. And I want that permeating throughout the entire company. Yeah. I'd say that's a hard one because it's such an unnatural behavior for most people that work in corporate world. And so I'm still getting the organization through that barrier to the point where they are comfortable uh, trusting right. and being transparent. Okay, well, so I wanted to maybe have a conversation too about how um, you deal with... Um, kind of culture in general? Like, what are you doing to make sure that that, like, goes throughout the entire organization? Uh, I think the best thing for us uh, in that trust example is to really role model the behavior is probably the best way for me. Instill something like that. So, uh, a combination of myself exhibiting the behavior, but then we're also introducing things into the company that will hopefully get it working at the grassroots level. So one tactical example of that, uh, we just eliminated our um, accrued vacation policy. So there's a, a set of companies in the world, not a lot, uh, Netflix pioneered this, where they basically said, just take time off when you need it. Like, we're gonna, we're gonna trust you <laughs> to work. <laughs> that girl was like, I need a vacation. Right? She was like, I need a break. So, but no, my message is, you know, FaceTime is irrelevant. It's like, if you're here and you're engaged and you're delivering for the business, then you should be free to take time. You'll be an adult, we'll yeah. be an adult, we'll be transparent. So I hope things like that, over time, as we get those into the organization, will uh, we'll start having an imprint. Yeah. Okay, so I uh, wanted to talk about this kind of real life interaction. I think this is, uh, it, it, I, I don't really know where to come down on this, but there's like meeting people like on Facebook and on Twitter, mm -hmm. and then there's meeting people in real life, and like your life, it seems like they both have pros and cons, but talk to me a little bit about uh, how you feel about real life interactions and face to face interactions as opposed to people who are um, having the majority of their conversations online. That's a great. That's a great one. So, uh, Evite, Evite's core mission as a business we have reframed recently. Because if you looked at the mission before, 
Uh, it might have been something like become the world's largest invitation service or something along those lines. Um, our new mission, and the reason we exist as a company, is to help bring people together face to face. So it's a very relevant question in terms of how we think about our business. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and the reason we feel that that's important is there is an absolutely different kind of value that comes from in-person interaction versus digital interaction. Um, and that literally at the physical level. So uh, there's science that you're pretty proven if you if I were to hug you, I don't know you well, but if I oh, were to yeah, hug you, yeah, I would have, okay, oxytocin. Oh, oh, oh. So what's happening in my body right now? So, oh, unless you hate me, which I don't think you do, no. uh, there's a drug called oxytocin, which okay. is pretty famous. Um, it's the drug that basically when you're in love, it triggers, it makes you feel good, warm. Oh. So you should have gotten like, go a bit little bit of boost. Over. Absolutely. Phys just physical contact of okay. any kind will actually introduce oxytocin. So like a massage. Um, ah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know you that well. <laughs> I don't know you that well. Uh, but no, absolutely, you know, a smile, a hug, right? Those things are that yeah. literally at, a, at, a, at an evolutionary level, they have value that you're never gonna replicate in the digital world. And so it's one thing that I'm concerned about and that we're in this ubiquitously, ubiquitously connected world. We're spending so much more time uh, in almost faux social interaction because it's, it's digital, but you know, my big concern is that we leave all that behind and we forego the stuff that really matters. And so that's why Evite's exciting for okay, me. Okay, so if I was um, like touching you all the time and like we had like a big <laughs> oxytocin um, yes. deal going on, <laughs> would, that, uh, would that make me a more productive employee or is that just a kind of a social thing? You just want people to feel better? Uh, that's a great question. I haven't seen any research on whether that actually drives you know, better performance, but I think at the, at the highest level we are uh, literally genetically programmed to be social creatures. Uh, yeah, to look at but the your goal is to maximize revenue for the investors, right? Or no, our, our, our core goal is to actually do something that changes the world in a better way. Yeah. And hire engaged employees that want to do that, and that'll generate, that'll generate good stuff down the line. Okay. Yeah. So check out evite.com. Evite.com is the course site. And yeah. a lot of my business philosophies and personal philosophies around leadership. And hugging. And, and hug, yeah. not hugging. I could add a section on hugging. <laughs> is that uh, victorcho.info. Sure. Thanks, Victor. Appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, pure joy. Beauty is the light in the dark. One little spark can start a fire and behind every big thing is a small small beginning to start
so power conquer and devour your demons won't you set my heart on fire won't you set my heart on fire Is that, your, is that yours? Oh, yeah. Cool, Sorry. yeah. Good job, good job. Hey guys, thank you so much. I want to thank all our guests uh, for coming out tonight. And again, Pure Joy. Let's give it a round of applause one more time for them. Yeah. Be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff at Downtown Podcast. And uh, check us out on YouTube as well. Subscribe, all that good stuff for us. And uh, thank you. We'll see you again next week. Goodbye.